Hello gentle viewers, welcome back to this coverage of uh, Basel of Max and Strasbourg. I'm Raphael Levy, alongside Patrick Dickman, and we're going uh, straight to the feature match area where we're gonna cover the eighth and last round of the Swiss of the Legacy main event. Gary Mialare running uh, Miracle, uh, former uh, uh, host here. Oh, at yeah. the Bazaar of Moxen. he was. Uh, we were. Uh, we covered the first uh, couple bombs together. Is uh, facing uh, David Ferra, who's running. I don't know, unfortunately. I haven't little, seen what he's running. A little dash. Yeah. A little dash for that. A little red dash for now. Yeah. I'm gonna find out soon enough. Fortunately, I can't make out Carsey yet. Just yet. So, can you give us a little, uh, little uh, update on the um, on the standings of this tournament? Yeah, standing so far have been pretty interesting when it comes to tiebreakers mostly because I think almost everyone has to play. Like there's almost no one that is safely in the top eight outside of um, Johannes Gutbrot and Anton Kalinski because I think they haven't played yet and they are the two players at 19 points leading the field so far. So they probably just be taking a draw. And uh, we also got Niklas Holtmann at 19 points, but he's probably going to be paired down against Pierre Canali at 18 points. Uh, I think, oh, yeah. I I think have they played? No, they haven't played. They haven't played yet, no. And um, Pierre Canali could take the draw, but it's very risky. His breakers at 58% are, they, they might not hold strong because there's a uh, place 4 to 8, which are all at uh, 18 points, but all have breakers below 60% while there's several players at 17 to 16 points with, with breakers that go up to 70% so if one of those players picks up a win they'll be secure, securing a spot at the, uh, in the top 8 while it's, uh, if for example Pierre, uh, some, some of 18 points play, uh, sorry, Pierre with 19 points taking a draw um, might, might actually be kicked out of the um, top 8 by breakers. So just in case you were not following what Patrick was saying, yeah. it is, it is very interesting if you follow, but if you're not very familiar with uh, what's happening uh, during the last round, some player can draw, some player cannot draw. Most players have to play in order to play in the finals. So Gary's playing Miracles and he's facing what I think is a Storm. Yeah, it appears to be um, Brainstorm into Cabal Therapy, that appears to be Storm against Miracle, which is a very Interesting matchup, but also really tough to play, especially for the Storm player, because getting through permission, that is really really a tough thing to do. I think when uh, I used to play Miracles, and uh, I think game one is very hard, mm -hmm. but the next games are not that hard. All right. I think, I think post-board, when you uh, when you get the better answers to... Uh, yeah, cards like Fluster Storm, for example. Yeah, it becomes a lot better. Mm -hmm. So I think... I would say Miracle is a uh, is, uh, favorite, mm -hmm. yeah, especially least. after board, yeah. so that, that's my call. Oh, that's, that was yeah. that was That big. was a fantastic that was draw, that was draw. counterbalance, right? Yeah. He, 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 uh, yeah, he, he, he got he, to hide it with yeah. uh, Brainstorm. Put it on top of Brainstorm. And assembling that, cup, that crucial combo of Sensei's Divining Cup and counterbalance against the Storm deck, yeah. that is uh, a very nice position to be in. Yep, there we have it. That's gonna no, that, that's gonna be tough now. Yeah, it's gonna be very tough to to beat this. As I mean, as soon as, uh, as long as there's not like free lands on uh, Gary's top of the library, um, I think he might be in a really good spot. Well, he has a flooded strand, so yeah, that's right. He can shuffle. I think he has another fetch line in hand, so he's yeah. never gonna run out of gas. No, probably so this, not. This this. This is the the dream start from uh, the Miracle player. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be tough for David to... Uh, yeah, to, fi to find a way to through this, right? That, yeah. I mean, for now it's probably going to be a uh, draw go for quite some time because uh, David is going to try to like assemble uh, a kill or like find find a way to like assemble the perfect, perfect uh, seven uh, to somehow combo off while the Miracle deck is 
probably just interested in yeah stabili stabilizing and eventually finding finding a kill. But oh, he's not stabilizing. He's full in full oh, control. Okay. Yeah, he's here. in full control. That's right. But he still needs to find something to kill to kill off the storm deck. I here mean, you go. Snapcaster mage. Yep. Ten turns. Ten turns to go. He doesn't need more. Yeah, like, he doesn't need to uh, like ultimate jays or yeah, set I know, up a I know. huge uh, absolutely entry the angels. I know. Two turns is gonna be enough. Yep. He's probably gonna find something by the time he gets there. Yeah. But this is this is a good the threat good enough. I Just play lands and say go. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Is this the first miracle deck we have in the in the yeah in the I future match? I, I don't think that I think no I don't think I saw any miracle deck so far. Yeah, I don't think there are a lot. There actually a lot. They were uh, last last bomb last battle Maxen and uh, Ansi uh, Anton Korlinski who's sitting now at X at X zero one and probably safe for top 8 with the uh, Eldrazi. Mm -hmm. He beat I think two miracle players in the top 8. Oh wow. There were two or three in the in the NC's top 8. Oh okay. I think there were three in the three in the top 4. Mm -hmm. Might be. Oh wow, that's and the storm storm was the, was the big story of the of NC. There were two storm players in the top 8 mm -hmm. including I think uh, uh, Javier Dominguez. Mm -hmm. I think it was Javier Dominguez who was this All right. One. And another play with uh, Belcher, oh, so yeah. uh, Storm was was well represented uh -huh. in uh, NC. Yeah, I mean here Storm also won yeah. won the last GP, didn't it? I think like Storm. If if you know how to play Storm, it is a very potent deck. Right? Was it modern? Sorry, in, um, modern Storm or was it who uh, the last GP? Or yeah, no, it was Legacy uh, Prague. Oh, Prague. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Oh, yeah, you you've been in um, Costa Rica at that time, right? Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. No, that was oh. that was the week after. Yeah. Prague was after. Ah, all right. I didn't I didn't go to Prague. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, here we have it. It's just um, draw go for a while, playing lands, and snap custom mage is chipping for two damage a turn. Uh, it's just so tough to like find a way through um, senses divining top plus counterbalance, especially for a storm deck. Like, You'll, you'll be casting a lot of low costed spells, uh, and you won't be casting any low cost spells when there's counterbalance and sense of divining top on, uh, on the board. And just quick, uh, quick information for you guys: standings have been posted online. So if you want to check out and maybe do the math, yep, you can do that now. Yeah, that was uh, whatever. Whatever uh, Patrick was saying, you can understand it now yeah. with the with the standings yeah, my, online. My, my explanation wasn't very good. I'm sorry. It was. It was very good. It was uh, probably a little hard to understand for uh, for people who didn't have the standing yeah. in front of them. Yeah, that's right. I was looking at the standings at that at that time. Um, if someone if someone follows, it's easy. It makes makes a lot of sense. But it, it's hard to understand standings if you're not familiar with. Uh, yeah, that's right. I mean, I've been I've been trying to understand standings uh, a little more um, because uh, the, t the math behind it it can be tough. And I mean. I, I have a solid grasp um, of the uh, of it by now, but still not not really good at it, and probably will never be. I have some experts that I'm referring to when I want uh, them to. I'll give you some hints after this game. Yeah. After this game's finished, I'll, I'll give you a little hint. Oh, thank you. So, <laughs> you'll write something about it. Yeah. Somewhere. So uh, yeah, I was I was uh, I said that there was no miracle in the feature match. Actually, Gary was playing in the feature match earlier today. I remember because oh, we yeah. see his uh, predict. Yeah, that's, that's right. We I saw him uh, predicting uh, mm -hmm. he was accurately some cards. Yeah. He was playing against Shortless Buck. But, that's uh, right. We only got to see like two minutes of the match, which he I forgot. Much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and by the time that the first first feature match was over, they were also, or, or, also already done. So Gary's a French guy. He that's his last tournament in Europe for quite a while. He's moving to Japan Ooh. in a couple of weeks. That's nice. Uh, Attacking yeah. David at twelve. Clock is ticking. Yeah, okay. Slowly but surely. Yeah. The, the game is playing pretty pretty much uh, playing out pretty much as expected. As um, Storm play just just not like he would probably be waiting until the very last turn to go off and um, just try try to assemble a good hand. Yeah, nothing is gonna resolve here. No, probably not. It's under. So you don't cast. 
Because he wrote, you don't cast it one. That's going to be tough. Yeah. And no I mean, Dark Patrol. And, and I know that there's at least one Force of Will in um, uh, in Gary's hand. I, I, I've seen that one before. I, I don't know if he's holding additional counter magic. So now I think I think it's time to fetch. Probably, yeah. He will find land. He yeah. will find land somewhere. Yeah. I mean, you should probably don't don't want uh, one and zero in, um, on top of your, li of your library forever. Um, in the worst, he has three fetch yeah, lands. Yeah, I know. He has three fetch lands. I know. Well, two right now, but... Well, yeah. Two left. Yeah. Two shuffles left. Yep, takes a look at it. And finds a land. A land. Okay. I don't think there's an answer in uh, David's deck. No, I don't think so. They, like, there's there's a Brook Decay in the sideboards, but uh, main deck, they got no solution to yeah. this. this guy, is, that, is it Dark Ritual? Uh, it's a Ritual. I think it's Dark Ritual, yeah. I don't know this picture. Yeah. Me neither. I was just counting this, the mana symbols. <laughs> it's probably in the, like, the demon versus angel versus yeah. people. Yeah, whatever David is trying to assemble yet, probably not gonna resolve. Reign of Filth. So one mana, until end of turn you can uh, sacrifice, lands. sacrifice a land to have a black mana, I think. Yeah, uh, it's two black mana. Huh? Uh, is it? I think it's one. It's, yeah, it's one, yeah, sorry. Sacrifice a land, it's yeah. a squandered resource. Yeah, yeah. Resource. you're right. But you only get black. Yeah. Uh, each land you control. Yeah. So how does it work? What if you play another land? What happens? Does it get the ability or not? Um, that's that's I, a trick question. I, 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 think I, think, I, think, I think it doesn't due to layers, but uh, I'm not 100% sure. I think it does. Otherwise you would say each land uh, in play. Ah uh, yeah, you, you think so? Uh, I, think, I, think, I think it's what makes the difference. Okay. I'll ask around, but I think yeah. it's what makes yeah. <laughs> like each land in play, mm -hmm. you control gains, blah blah blah. Otherwise, you would say, oh, maybe that's like the, an old version. Yeah, might be. But I think I think you can uh, if you play another land, you can do mm -hmm. it. It's like uh, vision charm. All oh, right. Like until end of turn, yeah, all the all the lands are this. Mm -hmm. Is he gonna manage to cast a lethal tendrils here? Uh. Is he holding tendrils? I don't know, but like that's probably the only way he yeah, can. Yeah, uh, probably the only way. And um, I mean, the only thing that can counter tendrils here is if there's a Jace the Mind Sculptor on top. But uh, uh, well, now he's trying. He's trying to uh, like work around the top. Yeah. Which is which is he's doing it fine now, but is he gonna is he gonna make it actually make it? So maybe he can actually play the. Oh, never mind. <laughs> he's not playing anything he in this game anymore. Yeah. Like he could have played the uh, Cabal Ritual, mm -hmm. getting f like five mana, like yeah, forcing his opponent to fetch again. But um, I mean, Gary was still holding Force of Will, and um, David was almost empty-handed. So if he was going for um, Cab Cabal Ritual, and he doesn't have a two on top, he would have forced for sure. Yeah, he would have needed a couple more cards, like yeah. five or ten. Yeah, a couple more, like yeah, five or ten. <laughs> <laughs> so we go back, we go to uh, table two for uh, for the other match of this feature match. The other table, the feature match. Uh, I, Marius Hausmann against Kevin. Can't pronounce the last name. Kev Kevin Sauvageon. Yes, Sauvageon. He was he was on the on the French team uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. Not last year, the year before. Yeah. Along with uh, Jeremy Desani. Yeah. In the war, the World Magic Cup, did not. Uh, <laughs> That did not do too well, but let's not forget yeah. about this. And now Jer Jeremy will... Oh, well. oh, we just found out that Kevin... Kevin won 2 and 0. He's yeah. uh, 
Oh, he was an 18 points. Yeah, he, Kevin was at uh, 18 points, so he he just locked up his spot in the top eight. And from what I've seen, I think he's on Eldrazi. Uh, I did not get to see any cards, so I've seen, I've seen two Thought Not Sears. Oh yeah, that is so, quite uh, telling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you play them in lands no, or in miracles. No, there's no other deck I believe that is play. Well, you could play them in something like uh, shops, but don't, you probably wouldn't do that. So no. how, do you, how are you casting them? Oh, shops? But, no, you can't play shop. No, it, it, it wasn't shops yet. Yeah, this is why I corrected myself too much. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, Let's get back to this match. Yeah. So losing game one, Storm versus Miracle. This is this is looking bad. I don't like. If I'm on the, on the Storm side, I don't I don't like to lose game one. Well, I, I don't in general. Like to, I don't like losing game one in general. But in general, uh, losing game one is not good. <laughs> yeah. But losing a de losing a game one when the yeah. sideboard games are a lot harder to mm -hmm. win is uh, is a lot harder. Yeah. Well, at least he does have removal. Uh, like should have removal for um, counterband from the sideboard. So. This, that's at least something, so it's not that he's like coming com completely empty-handed, but yeah, of course. Plus the storm is really, really annoying to deal with, and we'll just have to see how it goes. I don't think first storm is the worst card. They can still take it yeah. out with chemo therapy. Yeah, no. uh, counter counterbalance is uh, is something else because bringing yeah, in know, bringing in uh, bringing a crimson grip is. Uh, mm -hmm. It blows. I don't yeah. like it. Yeah. You're playing Storm. You want to play, like yeah, you, of course you, you, you need the you need the mana. Mm -hmm. You need the card draws. You need the kill. Well, you don't want to bring in the. But more if it's giving you at least some time to set up. I mean, not 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 a whole lot because at some point I just have so many uh, counter counter spells yeah. that you're pr probably never uh, resolving resolving your uh, relevant spells. But uh, I don't think that it's the end of the world that you bring in some removal for the most problematic card, which is counterbalance. Yeah, then you have uh, yeah, Jace is probably uh, not your first uh, your first your first problem no, because it costs not. a lot. Yeah, and uh, Miracles do not does not want to tap out for Jace. No, I I, I, would, <coughs> I would probably be boarding it out. Like, yeah, honestly, yeah. I, I don't think that is, that you need it. Like, what for? Yeah, and, and they have they have. Uh, you can't really fate seal them because they yeah. uh, they keep their fetches. Yeah, they keep their fetches. They uh, and, and I mean, it sounds silly, but a lot of the cards actually do the same, like rituals and things like that. So yeah. you need to, you, you need to have perfect so information yeah, what, what they, they are do? holding. It's not like every card is a threat. Yeah. Or like unless it, unless it's the yeah. tenth land. Yeah. Exactly. Every card is a threat. You don't know what to do. Yeah. It's just a brainstorm. Well, only a brainstorm. Mm -hmm. Because four, so. <laughs> I'm looking for a Julian Nab on the Knab on the standings. I don't think uh, he's over here at four uh, at, 12, at twelve points. Wow, I think he started. I think yeah, he started four zero. He started four and zero. Oh, he hasn't won since then. Oh. So we won't see Julian and his elves, yeah, elves well. in the top eight. So it's at least two Eldrazi in the top eight. It's a good deck. But, I mean, uh, I'm not. I'm not saying that the players picked it because of, just because of that. But it's it's rather easy to pick up. It has a very powerful, straightforward plan, and I can see why someone's playing it. For example, I'm, I would not call myself an, an an expert at Legacy. Like I do play it every now and then, and I like the format. But I. I'm looking at this Adrazi deck saying, well, it's really good. I would have strongly uh, considered playing it for, for GP Prague if I had gone. Uh, I had some XM, so it didn't go. But if I would have been there, I would have played Adrazi. I mean, I think it's a good choice. All right, 30 minutes, 31 minutes on the clock. This is, uh, oh, maybe, the, yeah, this is... Uh the bare minimum to start game two. Yeah. But the players have been pile shuffling a lot, so yeah. they've been shuffling for a long this time. Is, this is this is not. <laughs> uh, this is something people like players should like learn to do. Yes. Like shuffle faster. S several pile shuffles are not necessary. Yeah. No. At, at least it's not. I mean, it's not even shuffling. It's just downing the cards. But if you, uh, I don't know, I think it feels like. Players are uh, wasting too much time yeah, between the games. Absolutely. I don't play very fast, but I mm -hmm. don't draw very often. Yeah. Well, I, I've been drawing 
uh, quite quite a bit, but that also uh, depends on which deck I'm playing. Like when I was playing Quinn, for example, games like if you're playing blue games, of course they can go long, but I try not to waste too much time on shuffling. Like I, I used to do that. I, I used to shuffle way too much. Uh, by now, I, I don't do all these pile shuffling things anymore because it's just annoying and it takes a lot of time. But don't forget to shuffle. No, no, I, I don't forget to shuffle. I'm just saying I don't pile shuffle anymore, which is not pile shuffling. <laughs> no, which is not shuffling. Pile sorting. Yeah, sorting. <laughs> Alright, it's game two, David on the play. Finally, it's time, time for some action. Um, so, Mulligan on David's side. So, it's not time for some action? It's time no, for some yet. shuffling? Not yet, yeah. Maybe I have like two minutes to talk about what I told yeah. you about the rankings, mm -hmm. standings. Yeah. If you want to know where you're gonna sit at the end of the next round, yeah. Like if you win, mm -hmm. so basically you take your standings, mm -hmm. you check your uh, your uh, your tiebreakers. Yeah. You look who on the standings have the like the same tiebreakers as you with three more points. Mm -hmm. You take uh, the difference between you and him, the standings. Mm -hmm. You have it. You are like you divide by two. Mm -hmm. you divide by two. Yes. For, for example, if there are twenty seats between you and the player with three more points with the same tiebreakers. Yeah. You divide it by two, and that's where you're gonna end. That's where you get to end up if you win. Ah, oh, all right. Pretty much like works every time, except for the last round where you have to be yeah. like hundred percent sure. Yeah. Suppose you like you can uh, figure out at like three or four seats where you're gonna end up if you win. Oh, that's interesting. Thank it's you. very easy. Like that's yeah. the fastest way to yeah, do it. Yeah, very fast. Nice, nice heuristic. We're in for some magic. Storm on Ponder. I'm gonna write down all these ideas so yeah. I, I don't forget about them if I, when I want to write something. This is this is uh, this is on paper for next time and uh, all right ponder on both sides. David pondered on his first turn. Gary's pondering now. This is probably what both players will be doing for the first turns. Really, like just pretty much set up their draws. Uh, Gary trying to to prevent David from going up and as you already stated, it's. Uh, it's really tough for Storm to find a way through all the permission from the Miracle deck. The rest... I think David prefers to uh, make sure Gary does not have counterbalance in play mm -hmm. than having to find a cross and go. Yeah. This is less reactive. Mm -hmm. I like the proactive plane of the wrestling and... Uh, yeah, not, not the best hand for Gary though. I mean, there's Snapcaster Mage that is not really doing anything right now. There's Monastery Mentor, which won't be killing David before like turn five at least. And it's, it's not a bad hand. I think it's not. Yeah, I mean, hand. it very much depends on the top of, of yeah. his deck, of course. I mean, there's two, two cantrips. Yeah, that's the brainstorm. It is. There's two cantrips. Well. Yeah. I don't know how how good Rest in Peace is at this point, mm -hmm. or like any time during yeah. the game. It's pretty good against Storm. It's pretty good as uh, it. Um, Keeps uh, open from having uh, uh, threshold threshold for kibble therapy. Mm -hmm. It uh, totally and uh, disable pest and flames. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he plays pest and flames. We haven't seen red mat red sources, but I'm pretty sure he does. Uh, and that's it, I think. Oh, kibble therapy. You can't yeah. flashback kibble therapy, which is probably not going to be relevant. Mm -hmm. but yeah. They used to be. They used to be a storm deck using creatures. Yeah, yeah they had the Santi Swarm and yeah. um, 
there used to be another deck yeah. with creatures with like yeah. the Ferguson Walkers. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. With uh, Killing the Weak. You know what Killing the Weak is? Um, no. What it's is one it? black mana. Mm -hmm. uh, sacrifice a creature, you get four mana. Ah, all right. And he was playing Infernal Contracts and stuff. <laughs> okay. So three mana draw four yeah. cards. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, I don't think this deck is very good anymore. No, no probably not. It used to be good. Yeah. Used to be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, I don't think that that there's faster play in uh, in, 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 in David's deck. Well, it depends. There's, there's I mean, there's I'm Storm, there's sure Storm and I'm Epic Storm, and they are like I think there was. I think I saw. I saw. I don't know. I don't know if it was David. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I saw. I saw him playing. Yeah. Uh, All right. Now we just have to wait and see. But, but I think I also would have picked Brainstorm there. Like, yeah. As I said, like this hand is only only decent due to the cantrips and taking the, the most powerful one away, which is Brainstorm. Does does make sense? I mean, I don't think that he's uh, worrying about his graveyard too much. Yeah, but and with with Snapcaster Mage, mm -hmm. yeah, he's like, also so shutting not, down yeah. his own uh, shutting down his own Snapcaster Mage. That's right. Another plunder. For example, I feel this is too much. Effort. Yeah. Like after a fetch land, you don't. Like, how much when, can how much when, can your opponent when, has? When I'm, when, I'm sh when I'm supposed to shuffle my opponent's deck, I just stick to the competitive tools of Magic, which is one, two, three. Just, yeah, exactly. You have, you yeah, have shuffle to shuffle three times, to, shuffle three times to consider a deck shuff being shuffled. Yeah. So when I get a uh, like when I, when my opponent shuffles his deck after fetching, I will shuffle three times yeah. and give it back. Yeah. <laughs> In my head, I'm always like counting depend, like one, two, how three. Much, how much my opponent like look at his deck and yeah. do stuff, but how much can he like? Yeah. How much can he do with his deck when yeah. he just fetches? If you just pay it a little bit of attention, you see mm -hmm. it's not. Well, to be fair, these guys are playing for trade, and I mean, this might just get at your nerves, right? Like, uh, it's like you, you just want to be like s super clean with everything. Make sure you shuffle your opponent's deck. Uh, like, I'm not saying don't thoroughly. shuffle. I'm just saying don't don't waste too much time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if this is going to game three, um, they probably won't be able to to finish it. Yeah. Like, I mean, and now you do like both players have been playing pretty fast. It's mm -hmm. just they've been wasting so much time. Mm -hmm. Fetch Tundra. Is Gary gonna gonna tap out to play a mentor here? What do you think? Um, he might, but I mean, he's uh, just counterbalance. So, uh, just counterbalance. Yeah, that's that's better. Yeah. Oh, lots of oh, the top. Wow. Uh, these were his two draws and uh, counterbalance. That, that was pretty that's good. brutal. That was that was a, that was a good couple of pounders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see if um, I think, it's, I think uh, it's time to go off. Well, I, I think um, I think David might also like waiting until he finds an abrupt decay because or, or a cross grip because I think he brought them in. Like he, he he fetched for the tropical <coughs> island and I'm quite convinced that we'll be seeing removal for um, for the counterbalance at some point. Okay, so that's a two two on top. Yeah. So it's two and one. That, uh, he got a warrior by. Yeah. So he cannot play his cabal therapy yet. Mm -hmm. Or Infernal Tutors. Well, I, I guess... Uh, but he doesn't have a land, so no. that's the problem. He cannot... Oh, this is going to be tough. Mm -hmm. David does not have a third land. So everything he's going to play, all the mana sources he's going to play going to get cantered. There's lands on top. Piece of no cabal therapy is not gonna do much. Oh, he has the he has the cross and grip in hand. Yeah, he just needs the third land. I mean, like 
I think, I think you have to bring in um, enchantment removal against the yeah, I guess, I guess so just, yeah. like they, they will always um, be like eventually they, they'll be able to like, put together their yeah. counterbalance and 60 mining top combo and you just you just have to come prepared I still prefer to discard it, but if it's coming <laughs> yeah, it's to not play, that yeah. easy with brainstorm in the format. I mean, I agree. I, I mean, agree. if if, so, if you, like if you have mana open for the brainstorm, your opponent casts a discard. Put a counterbell in the stash. Yeah, you always stash for later. You always uh, get the option to just put the cards on top of your library and just save them. Yeah, there's still no third land for David, which would probably love to just kill the counterbalance, and um, just seems to not like be unable to find that third land. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of situation I mm -hmm. like to be in. When, when playing Miracles? Oh yeah, that was so <laughs> good. Yeah, of course. Being in a driver's seat, just have uh, uh, infinite mana. Yeah, have it all. Yeah, don't don't, just, don't just bother don't, yeah, don't bother casting anything, yeah. have it all. <laughs> yeah. And we can see that he's just going for the, for the mentor. He I just like wants, to, uh, wants to end the game quickly. Yeah. I like having the rest in peace as well, just as a, an extra stuff. Mm -hmm. Or something. Yeah. And here is Detection Probe, and in response, uh, Gary is going to activate his Sensitivity Mining Top and see if there is a one drop uh, in the top three. And let's say he does not have a one drop. What do you do? Do you draw a card? Like, do you put the Sensitivity Mining Top on the top of your library? Depends what the rest of the hand is. Uh, it's a force and something that I it's cannot a force, quite make out. Uh, I don't know. Well, it depends what you have because mm -hmm. other, if you have nothing, if you don't have two drops, yeah. then why, why putting anything different? Yeah, but he, he's doing thing. it and there is dark, dark ritual, ritual in response. I'd, I'd love to see which picture it is. Yeah, I also don't know the picture. It might be demons against uh, mm -hmm. angels versus angels. Yeah, I don't have the deck list right now, so I don't know if there was that ritual in that set, but sure I, I, at least I've never seen this artwork, so I also had to like look twice. And there we have quite the stack being organized. Yeah, it's a small stack. Yeah, but it can grow. Very small Yeah, it can grow. Force of will. Force of will pitching snap casting edge. So Gary is now empty-handed. Interesting. And yeah, he'll most likely be buying himself an like another turn, or not buying himself, but yeah, this is probably going to end the turn for David because with just one green mana, I don't see him uh, doing anything busted anytime soon. Yeah. Oh, this CI. I've, no, I've never seen this one. No, me neither. I have no idea where it comes from. There is sensitivity mining top. Uh, Leaves a token behind and gets to attack for five. So, some Yuyas putting putting on pressure there. I think he's giving David one more turn, or might might actually be lethal the turn after that, depending on uh, the rest of his hand. So I, I saw David uh, Gary's so terminus on top of Gary's library. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Maybe he was. Maybe he wanted to play around empty the barns. Yeah. Like I like. I like keeping at least one mm -hmm. answer to um, empty the barns. Yeah. Going into the tank about those top three cards. I like keeping something to uh, counter there. Mm -hmm. Dark Confidence. Sometimes Storm brings in Dark Confidence. I don't think that Dark Confidence is going to be relevant in this match. Oh, no, not in, in this match anymore. Anymore? Yeah, because uh, we're facing down Mentor and two tokens, the game is going to end very shortly. I mean, not now, but yeah. like in general, Storm uh -huh. sometimes brings in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, now it's, I, uh, yeah, it's did, not very good that, now. I did that for the first Modder Pro Tour. I yeah. was playing Dark Confidence in my sideboard, yeah, I was playing Storm. Well, I, didn't see? Do, I didn't do very well, though. But, uh, well. The well, some were people good. do it even if they're bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Here another answer to uh, to both uh, tokens or uh, empty the warrant tokens and uh, lines eye diamond. I don't think I don't think you blow it now. Uh, I think it uh, just 
played the engine ex explosive to be threatening yeah. to, to be threatening lethal next next turn. I mean, I think I'll go, I'll go. he's in like yeah. Uh, never mind. Although if he blows up his engine explosive, he's also going to kill his token. Yeah, no, I know. But uh, I was I was wondering if play explosive was would have been better in the next turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think but so too because it would have been re uh, lethal regardless. And uh, uh, yeah, playing it now is fine. It's no, this, it's plus two, mm -hmm. plus two now, and a token next turn. Otherwise, uh, on the next turn it would have been plus three. So it's at least at least the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he has the yeah, yeah and that's, that's just a leap. yeah with the top on top. Yeah, top having top. token in play is better. David. Fifteen minutes left in the round. Mm -hmm. Time not a not a not yeah. an issue in this match. Gary moves to seven and one. And uh, yeah, he also locked up his spot in the top eight. Congratulations to him. Like, I, I would have really liked to see David uh, hit a third land there because he was he was waiting for it so, for so long. Oh, there's Bastard Flames, all right. So David is out, Kevin is in. I'm just uh, working my magic here. And we'll be moving to table two. And these guys finished yet? No. I never. Well, I think they moved someone else to the feature oh. area. Yeah, there's Pierre Canali oh, against Pierre Kaninsky. So this is uh, Pierre squatting the, like, the feature match area. Yeah. We like Pierre. Pierre was with us. Yeah. He's our champion. <laughs> team coverage on the... Team coverage who presents. Uh, he looks to be in a very good position. Uh, at least from what I can see, I think he's leading 1-0. Uh, with a pretty huge board. I mean, he's facing down... Um, reality Smash and Fortnite here, but got a pretty sizable board of his own. What is that uh, GTA naming? Uh, it's not ah, GTA, the, that's a, uh, a, a, a Piffing Needle, Piffing Needle naming. It's the Bible Symbiote. It's a Symbiote, yes. Yeah. Swings in for four, or is he tapping them? I think, I think he's attacking because the, yeah. that trap is ancient, is rarely being tapped and not attacking. Unless you have opposition, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's a leading position here. There's no yeah, symbiote. Uh, even, even, yeah, even, even if there was, even if there was, he could not use it. Yeah, uh, I was getting a little bit ahead of myself because I thought there was also an opposition, but there is none. And he's on 10. Yeah, he's on 10, facing, facing down mind power. Damage. And Anton Karolinski is not. Yeah, he's, he might not even. He might not. Yeah, he will probably make it. Yeah. Sorry about that. He he is on 19 points, and he has a pretty good uh, type uh, tiebreaker. Yeah, Anton should most likely be in even with a loss, right? Yeah. yeah. So trying to uh, dream crush on a, a Frenchy friend. <laughs> I don't think that he's doing it on, on purpose. Oh yes, he does. Oh, yes. You, you, you just think he's, he's a meanie? He's a meanie. <laughs> I'm pretty used. Oh. Uh, Rob DK is gone. Would have been good if. Uh, yeah, if he has a sim yeah, uh, symbiote. symbiote. But then he probably would have killed the yeah. um, fifth needle right away. Yeah. Yeah, this more, more yeah, just, yeah, just flooding the board with a lot of creatures. Yeah, opposition would be good here. Yeah, opposition, opposition would be, be good. really good. Uh, what about... I think uh, Kratov Behemoth would be yeah, very Kratov, good. Yeah, Kratov Behemoth would be game over, right? Uh, I think so. Five, five times. Uh, well, can you do it? We'll see. Or uh, Zenith? Yeah. Zenith. Well, Zenith would be game. Eight, nine, six would be a six. Thing would six still, would be, like, would still be game, yeah. Yeah, it would still be game. So he has a few outs. It's a two drop. Okay, Visionary. So still, uh, still good. I think the outs are still about the same. <sighs> He's counting. Uh, he can, he can gain some life with the. Oh, that's right, Charles. Yeah. How much life? Two life. So that, that doesn't change anything. Two from five to seven, that's still two futures. Yeah. A lethal. Uh, uh, oh. I, 
think he can survive another turn. Yeah, he can. But we, we, we'll see what the top of his deck provides. Oh, another visionary. Okay. Flooding the board. So he's thinking about leaving the Noble High Rock untapped in case he draws opposition, opposition I believe. Yeah because there's only one land in the graveyard, so um, he can only generate one blue mana with the death right chance. And yep. He's gonna have the two green for the... for the... Uh, death right shaman, mm -hmm. just to gain life. Yep. So, uh... Yeah, well, but I think there's only one creature in the... In the that's, that's an opposition. It was, it was yes, an opposition? Oh, it wow. It is opposition. Look at this, yep. look at this. Yep. Oh, that's so good. Very oh, nicely yes. played. Like, remembering that there's... Uh, that he needs the second blue for, for his outs. Yeah. There's opposition. And, oh, that's gonna be... That's, that's very sweet. Let's hope for Adrazi that he can find another Piffy Needle, because oh, look, otherwise... Look at, this, look at that needle. Oh. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that needle... needle. You, do, do, do. No, no, no uh, symbiote being drawn. Okay, yeah, whatever. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, tides have shifted quite, quite a bit. I mean, I don't know about that last card in Antron's hand, but... We'll see what happens. It's probably just gonna tap oh, all the uh... I'm, I'm not sure why he would do that. And there's Eye of Yugin and Endbringer, I believe. Endbringer is pretty good. Yeah, Endbringer is pretty good. It gets untapped every single, um, uh, every single untapped phase, and. Um, you gotta read the card first. So you have to tap it to do stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you have to tap it to do stuff. For one uh, waste mana, it's going to ping. Um, is it? Is it, yeah, 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 is it going to ping for one mana? Yeah, no, I think it's. Yeah, no, it's I think, ping think, for think, one ping, and I think, two. I think ping, ping. You just uh, tap it. Ping is for free. Tap one waste mana. To, you get to tap um, a creature, and for two waste mana, you get, you get to draw a card. All right, that was a pretty good draw yeah. as well. Well, I mean. Uh, this, this is still pretty, anyone's game to take. Even, yeah, it's an even game. But Pierre is on the play. He's on yeah. the he's on the draw. But uh, I mean, with, with Anton at uh, with Anton at ten, yeah. I think um, he might, he might. I, I think Pierre might just be swinging in for Ooh. lethal next turn. Was that a top deck? This member. This member? I think maybe an attack with the attack. Uh, yeah, with the three three. I, 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 can he not just go for lethal right now? Dude, one, one, one two, three, four. No. no, it's one more turn. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. a good one. Against an empty-handed Anton, and I, I think there's nothing to save him because even if you draw a piffing needle now, you will just. I be can wrath. <laughs> yeah, uh, all is dust, but um, I don't well, that, think that, that, that he. Good. But he can cast it. He, he cannot. No, no it's, 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 not, it's, it's not, yeah. Uh, he cannot cast the wrath. Yeah. A mimic, mimic yeah, and okay. yeah, he's just gonna tap down the bird dead. and Ooh, court and swing in for lethal. On seven and one. Right after this game. If he managed to close it up, I'm pretty sure he will manage to do that. I can hardly imagine that he does not see that this is a uh, seven power, uh, like yeah, ten, ten power against an opponent. With, I think um, he's gonna do the behemoth mana. now. <laughs> I, I call the behemoth. Yeah, just, just because you can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's going on here? Yeah, not the, the higher attacking is not great. Yeah. And six. that is seven. That's six damage. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but he can still like, still exile the dismember, doing it the yeah. fan fancy way. That's nice. Yeah. Pierre Canali makes it with seven and one. He's gonna be joining Johannes Goodbrod and uh, probably Anton Karlinski, yeah. Kevin Sauvageon, Gary Mialare, and a few more people that we don't know. Yeah, that we don't know yet. About yet. Yeah. Let's not forget. Yeah, exactly. I love opposition. Yeah. And Anton is also going to be in the top eight, most likely. Like yeah, it's not, he's not set in six stone, or seven, but, I think. but uh, yeah, I was about to say that his, his tiebreaker should hold strong. All right, so I think we don't have anything else at the, in the feature match. Uh, in a few minutes, like uh, 15 minutes maybe, yeah. we're gonna have uh, the standings after eight rounds of uh, Legacy. We'll come back in the booth, Patrick Dickman and myself, Raphael Levy. We uh, just uh, witnessed the last round of the Swiss. Yeah. A few more minutes to be played, to close, to finish this uh, 
Yes, the Swiss, the Swiss portion, the Swiss portion of, of this tournament. I've got to say, this this round, we did not like get to see a lot of like actual decisions in game because Storm versus uh, versus Miracles is sort of a waiting game, and I would have liked to see um, the second game in the, in the first match be a little more exciting because I think if um, Gary draws his third land, this is an extra game with just two lands. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see much action. But uh, I gotta say, I love Canali's deck like, with the opposition. That's really cool. Yeah, um, opposition, a yeah. big, a big, a big new, yeah, big I, new thing. It was good in extended mm -hmm. back in '99. <laughs> it yeah. was good in standard in, uh, in a lot of decks. Yeah. But it, ju it just seems to be a good meta call right now because uh, like there's a lot of these these creature-based decks like Eldrazi, for example. What are they gonna do against opposition? Mm -hmm. like if you assemble some creatures in opposition, they don't have the Piffy Needle. Not, they're never going to kill you, and you'll just be setting up a lethal attack. Crater will be him off. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool, I believe. So, opposition was good against Eldrazi, it was mm -hmm. good against Lens as well. Mm -hmm. He beat two and a half, I think. No, did they draw the last round? I don't know. Um, no, they, he lost. No, no, he, he, he won. He won? Yeah, he, didn't he play Crater of Behemoth in the last round? Oh, yes, turn? he did. Well, yeah. He did win. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was watching from outside. I think it was Crater of Behemoth to end it. So, he beat three land decks. So, mm -hmm. what are we going to do now? We're going to. Like a deck deck of yeah. uh, lands. If you don't know what we're talking about, lands, <laughs> deck deck, right now. Hey everyone, Jeremy Zanier from Bazaar of